Thanks for joining. Let us start our today's session. So we have already seen lookup transformation. And today you will start with the lookup caching. And whenever we are creating any lookup, right? If you assume that this is the left hand side, uh, this is our source table. Right hand side, we have the target table. And we are looking up some tables. Okay, if you have some lookup table here, we are looking up some tables. It might be a target table or any tables. So whenever we create a lookup table, the lookup, it might be a table or flat file. So very first time Informatica while running, it will check whether we have defined any parameter or variable. Okay. So whether we have defined any parameter or variable we have defined. If you have defined any parameter or variable, so first it will read the parameter or variable. Right. So then, so once this variable, sorry, this parameter variable has been completed, then it will go for the lookup. Okay. So it will create the look, lookup caching. We'll start reading the data from the lookup. So after creating the lookup cache, cache, then only it will go for the data read from the source. So this is the order it will run. So first it will read all the parameters and variables and then it will go for the lookup caching. So if you have the, this is the lookup table, if you consider, then if you are creating this lookup, so by default Informatica will take static catch. Okay. So it will bring, it might be Oracle, it might be any data sources, target might be again any data sources. It might be different database server or it, it can be a cloud also. So whatever you are going to create, so it will create Informatica will create a caching. Okay. So lookup caching in the server. So Informatica server. So what is the cache it will create? So it will create lookup caching on the server. Okay. So lookup cache on the server. So server only it will create Informatica server. So Informatica server, so it will create the lookup caching. So by default, it will create static cache. So by default, it will create a static cache. So whenever we are creating the lookup, right? So it will have the caching options automatically. It will be enabled and then it will create. So where it will create on the Informatica server. Okay. After that, once it has been created, then whatever the source data we are taking, it will be compared with this lookup caching alone. And then it will take the data to this ID column. It will not compare with this particular lookup table every records. During the session runtime, say for an example, this session is running 10 minutes. During the session runtime, this caching will not change. It is a static. Okay. During the session runtime, this caching will not change. It is a static cache. So once the session has been completed, so this caching will get vanished. Okay, it will erase this caching. After that, it will take. So this is what it will run. So static cache means during the session runtime, the caching will not change. Okay, static cache does not change while the integration service processes the lookup. So it will it will not change it. So we have one more catching options, dynamic lookup catch. Sometimes what we will do, instead of creating this caching, for an example, here I have 10K records. Okay. But whatever the lookup you are, we are doing, it has more records. So 10 million records here we have, or 1 million record I have. Okay. Or 1 million record I have. So when compared to the source table, the lookup has more data. So in that case, if I'm going to create a lookup caching, then it will impact on the performance. So normally we should not do this actually. So what we can do instead of creating the lookup cache, we can remove the caching options. So Informatica will directly go and hit this particular table. Okay. So for this 10,000 record, and then it will take the values here. So this time it will not create any caching. Okay. Sometimes if you are facing any issues on the lookup, so then we can do this kind of activities. The dynamic lookup catch, 
we have one more lookup cache is called a dynamic lookup cache so whatever it may be that the static or dynamic once the session completed once the task has been completed the static cache or a dynamic cache it will get vanished okay it will not be available in the memory in the ram memory okay so this is what it will go for the static and dynamic cache okay so now what we are going to do we are going for a dynamic cache so dynamic caching means during the session run time the the catch will get it will get changed okay it will change for an example here i am going for the sed type 2 okay sed type 2 we can take this kind of caching or say for an example sometimes the interview they will ask how will you remove the duplicate value how will you remove the duplicate value on the column values on the key column so if I'm getting, it is not a full row duplicate. If it is full row duplicate, then I can remove by using a distinct options. Even distinct option also, it will be more uh, performance impact. Uh, it will impact performance. So why? Because distinct will create a lot of uh, memory, right? It will compare with each and every record and then it will, it will do the distinct options. But here, what we are going to do, it is not distinct of all the records, like a key column. So if you are getting a duplicate value on the key columns, so this way, if I'm getting one more time the same record, so how can I remove this record to load only unique record here, target, or SRE type 2? So how can we implement? So this type of logic. So for this type of logic, we can go for dynamic lookup cache. So what is the dynamic lookup cache, right? This target table we are looking up. You assume that the target table we are looking up. So target, we should not load any duplicate record. So that is what our the requirement, okay? So we are the source record. So initially, the target doesn't have any record. When we are going to create a lookup, so it will not have any record, right? So I'm going to have this 100. So 100 is available on the source table, but it is not available on the target table. We have to insert the record, right? So 100, we are not, we are going to insert it on the target. So if the moment you insert here, then it is a lookup table, right? Then it will automatically insert here also. Actually, it will not do in this way. So whenever you are going to insert, if the record is not available, first it will get inserted on the lookup caching only. So 100 is not available. It will be compared with lookup caching. And then we will get one column extra. So whenever you are creating a lookup as dynamic lookup, We'll get one column extra is called a new lookup pro port. So this is the one column we will get it extra in the lookup caching. So what is the option we'll get it? We'll get three options: zero, one, or two. If we are getting the zero, so that means the record is new, it is getting inserted here. If you are getting new lookup pro one, that record has been inserted on the lookup. So that's what we can get. Zero means no change change in the record sorry one means it's a new record and two means it's update so by using this new lookup report we can identify whether this particular record is new or updated record or no changes normally we will we will compare with md5 functionality right we will take md5 function and then we will compare with source md5 target md5 and we will create a flagging and then we will route it right so, but here the same way we can go for compare with this ID column only, but by using new lookup report, we can route the record. If the record is not available here, it will get inserted. Here also the record will get inserted, right? 100 will, will get inserted, it will get inserted here also. Okay, next record. We'll go for next one. So, what is the next record? 101. We'll get 101 also, like a new only for new lookup report. So 102, it's again, we'll get new only. 10, again, one is coming. For this record, we'll get no change. Okay, no change means for this record, we have already, the record is already available. There is no changes, then we will not insert. It might be on this, this column or full row. So if it is full row duplicate, you can ask me the question. If it is full row duplicate, you can do by using distinct in the source. Then why we are going for dynamic lookup catch? 
so by using distinct option in the source it will take a lot of lot of uh, comparison right the distinct option will compare each and every record so it will take a lot of uh, performance but here it is very easy to do this and our most of the dynamic lookup cache scd types we can go for this dynamic lookup cache okay so remember for both static and dynamic the once the task has been completed the cache will get vanished okay so insert the row into the cache the mapping task insert the row when the row is not in the caching okay the mapping task flags flags the row as insert similar way row as update and no change and changed so this way we have the three options here new, new lookup report so just to go through this uh, particular document you will get clear idea so whatever i have explained so far so it will be available now we will take this scenario and we will do scd type 2 implementation by using this dynamic lookup cache okay so i will give you the source and target table so just to create this table and load the data i have given the ddl statements so use the ddl statement i will share this particular document to create source table and target table source table you can put some data by yourself you can insert some data so here i have some data here I'm going to do type 2 implementation. See, we have already completed a series type 2 by using different methodology, right? So MD5 or normal, we have routed. But here also, I'm going to use MD5 only. But this time, I'm going to use dynamic lookup cache. So how to use dynamic lookup cache? See now. Okay, so this is the target table. I have the customer key. It's nothing but surrogate key, right? Yes. Customer ID, customer name, mobile number, city, effective date, end date, and MD5 checksum. So one extra column I just create. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to truncate table, table name. I'm just truncating. There is no data in the table. I will create the mapping. I will create a new mapping here. It's very simple. Same SRE type 2 what we have seen already, right? The same only. I will go to mapping first. I will take the mapping. Okay, if you are getting this type of error, you are trying to create a mapping, but you are getting this type of error. So if you are getting this type of error, it is due to you have logged in this particular account more idle time. So that's the reason. Okay, so you can log out and log in again and log in. Okay. Sometimes connection also, we might be getting this type of error. Okay, I will use one mapping, new mapping. So since we have already seen a series types, it's very simple only. I will create M underscore, SCD underscore, type two, dynamic lookup catching. Okay. I'll create the source here. The source table is this dynamic lookup catch. I will go to the connection. ORCL underscore SRC, use the connection here. See, you can take any any connection, okay? So you can take SQL Server, MySQL, or anything. Any tables also you can take. It's just you can take dimension table, any one dimension table, okay? So now I have to take, sorry, I have to take this table, right? This table I will take, dynamic lookup catching. Okay, I created this one. I will take this table. So I'll go to the target table. The target table, use the target table here. Go to select statement. I can use dynamic lookup catching. Same, this table. This is the table, right? Yes, I will use the table. Do we need to do truncate and load? No, it is a SCD, right? Don't truncate and load. And we are going to generate MD5 function. We have to generate MD5 function. So just I will create one expression to generate MD5 function. So I will open this expression just to create one MD5. So I will create in underscore MD5. Okay. It's a string and how many characters I have to put? Minimum 32. So don't forget, otherwise it will not generate correct MD5. 
So MD5 of, you can use customer name, concatenation, mobile number, concatenation, city. Do I need to use customer ID? No need. But in order to create a unique, num unique number only, but I'm including customer ID also. But no need to include. Okay. So just uh, adding this this value also to generate some unique numbers. That's it, hash value. So I will take this hash value here. Then what else I need to create? I need to create two more columns. So what is the column? In underscore effective date. Effective date. So what is the date date here? Effective date, system date. So configure, you can make this date here. Yes. Validate. One more column. In underscore end date. Effective date, end date. So date and time. I can make this way. Configure it. So end date will be. So where is end date? I can take this one. So end date equal to this date. So you can take this one. Two underscore date of. This is the end date. You can use this way. Yes. And now I will go to the lookup. See lookup. It's very simple. Just uh, you can see here. I will open the lookup. So this lookup we are going to make dynamic lookup caching. So I will take lookup object. So lookup we are going to make the target table. So ORCL underscore TGT. Target table. E underscore. Or the dynamic one I will select. So this is the dynamic table, right? Yes. So now I have to use the lookup condition. So what is the lookup condition I have to use? This field conflict I have to make. There should be a SRC underscore. So make SRC underscore customer ID. Customer ID equal to the source customer ID. Okay, look up customer ID equal to source customer ID. Customer ID and customer ID, I'm going to compare. And for the lookup, I will make uh, the new lookup report based on the MD5 function. Okay, go to return field. Do I need to have all this field? No, I need only this MD5 checksum. I will remove this field. I need customer key for that targets or update logic and customer ID for insert logic and MD5 for new lookup report. Remaining port, I will just remove it. Okay, no need to have this port. So just remove it. Then go to advanced one. So here you have to make the lookup caching. See here, lookup caching by default enabled. So if it is enabled, it will create a static catch by default. But we want to make dynamic lookup caching. So just to enable this lookup caching. So the integration service will create, it will dynamically change the lookup. So while making the dynamic lookup catch, we have to enable insert else update logic. See what is the meaning, right? It will insert the record in the lookup caching or it will update the record. So based on the data, okay, it will flagging, it will flag it, right? So we have to enable this option. And also we have to enable this option. Okay, so dynamic lookup catch is this option. So what is this option, right? Output old value on update. So whenever we are having output, right? The, the output we are taking. So that time we need to take the old value also. So why? Because the old value and new value will be compared. Okay, it will. It tells that, okay, it has been updated. So it defines whether the old value for output port. Okay, if you take output port here, the old value of output port will be output when updating a row in dynamic lookup caching. Okay, the old value will be taken. So that's what it will go for this one. So we have to enable these three properties. If you are enabling the dynamic lookup caching, the one more option will be enabled. What is the few extra one you are saying? Field mapping, right? If you are not enabling this, then it will not be available. See here. We are enabling the field mapping will be enabled. Okay. So what I'm going to do, go to field mapping. So here we have to do the field mapping here. So before 
going to do the field mapping, you go to the return field. In the return field, you can see here dynamic lookup cache enabled. We got one extra field. So what is the field? New lookup report. It is an integer field. It will have only three values. Zero, one or two. These three values only. Okay. Then if you see the comparison here, ignore in comparison. So which one we are comparing to create this new lookup report by using MD5 checksum. So I will I will ignore this customer key and customer ID for the comparison. Sometimes uh, in the power center also we'll have this option, right? So sometimes uh, we the interviewer they will ask, so what is that ignore in comparison? So if you are going to compare some field, if you do not want to compare those field which is available in the lookup, then you can make ignore in comparison. Then in the field mapping, we have to map it. Which one we are comparing by using MD5. So take MD5 from the source. So take it here. Okay, this one only. But these two field, no need to map it. No need to compare it. Why? Because we already mentioned that it's a no comparison, but it is a mandatory field. So you can make the same customer ID here. Customer ID to customer ID. We do not have any customer key. Why? Because customer key is coming from the lookup. So since it is, we are not going to compare it. So take this customer key itself. Okay. So customer ID itself, we can take these two fields. It will not compare. Okay. So clear the lookup object. We have to take the lookup object. And here you can go for advanced. So sometimes if you are making advanced here, it's, it will not create this field mapping. Go always this advanced. Lookup condition, field mapping, return field, the advanced option, everything we have created. So now I will create a router. No need to flag it. So just I can make the router. So based on the new lookup report, I will route it. So I will take insert options here. Insert. I'll go to update. Update here. Then insert options I will make. So when, when should I insert the record? If I'm getting new lookup report equal to one, right? If I'm getting new lookup report equal to one, I have to insert it. Similar way, if I'm getting new lookup report is, new lookup report is equal to two, I have to update the record, right? I have to update the record. Yes, that's it. We have split the record into two groups. So this is what? Since it is SA type 2, right? We will take a lookup object. Go to advanced here. We will make this lookup filter. This is the filter condition, right? Yes. We have to take. So what is the column? End date equal to the state. So end date, it should be the, the last date. Okay. So we will take this one. So otherwise it will not take the latest record right so we have to take always this one okay so now i will take the router in the router we created two groups right one group for insert one group for update so just to take the insert group here so we can directly insert it and we need to take a sequence generator, right yes we have to take the sequence i will take the sequence here open the sequence and go to sequence. So here you have one options. Disable the incoming field. I do not want any incoming field. So just to take this. Open the target. So just to take the target. I will show you the preview data so that you will get clear idea. This is for insert logic. Go to field mapping. Customer key will be next val port. Customer ID will be source customer ID. Source customer name source mobile number, source city, and the effective date end date. It is source effective date, source end date, MD5 checksum will be source MD5 checksum. Okay, this is normal. Normally how we will put, right? Similar way. This is for insert logic. For update logic. For update logic, we have to put 
same insert and update right i will copy this target control c control v two times I just put two times here okay so here i will take this one this is insert logic insert new record insert in that way i can say okay new record insert this is update record insert update record insert update record update right update record update update record insert i will take this way open this go to target i think font size okay so take the target here it is insert only go to field mapping same only only to change it then i will go to the update 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 you can use update here or update uh, or data driven so you can use data driven here based on which column based on the customer key column i have to update it right yes i'll take this way go to field mapping normal this is a normal one clear mapping based on the customer key i have to update the end date equal to effective date right yes that's it am i done with all the logic i hope everything i have completed so first what we did it we just did, we have taken one expression we created md5 checksum value effective date end date so this one we already in the md5 function itself we have seen right then lookup in the lookup only we are defining as lookup as dynamic lookup caching and based on this it will automatically change we are routing the record okay and it will get inserted or updated in the lookup catch first based on that we are taking the we are routing the record okay look up first inserting then we are inserting with the target table do i need to create a mapping task for this yes we have to create why because we are using sequence right yes we normally we will create for all the task empty underscore dynamic catching So dynamic lookup cache. Go to next. The sequence current value, initial value. So you can make it like one. Then if you want to schedule it, you can schedule it to finish it. So we created mapping task also. So I hope everyone is clear. So just I'm going to run. If I'm going to run now, it should insert all the record. How many records we have? As of now, three records. If you see the the lookup, if you, if I open the lookup, I'll go to preview data. So as of now, source we have and target we do not have. So what could be the new lookup row for for all the three records? So new lookup report will be one for all the three records. We'll check it. See here, left hand side, new lookup report. We are getting one, one, one. So if it is one, we are going to insert it. See, we are not getting any record from the lookup caching, right? Source, we have the MD5, but target, we do not have any MD5. We are comparing customer ID and this customer ID. If we are getting new, then we are inserting it. So it will automatically, it will flag it like insert. So based on a new lookup report, it will get inserted. Okay. So first we will run the mapping task. We will run it. We'll check whether it is inserting the all the data. It should insert. All the three records has been inserted now. See here. Source we have three. Insert. New record insert. Three record. New record update. Sorry, update record insert zero, update record update zero. 
so there is no update sequence is next value is 4 okay i am not going to insert or update any record in the source so just i am going to run it one more time see the mapping ta mapping now i am going to check lookup pro new lookup pro so what could be the new lookup pro now for all the three records zero right you can see here new lookup pro port will be zero so always if you want to do debugging so just to preview the data each and every transformations so that you will get it clear idea see here zero for all the record right so based on this only based on this lookup value only we are routing the data clear why we are getting zero so why because this md5 checksum value this md5 checksum value customer id both are equal customer id will not get compared only with md5 checksum value it will get compared okay so now we have if i'm going to run now it should not insert or update any record in the target zero records okay three zero 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 yes so what i'm going to do now so i'm going to make one record update the source i will update manually i will update i'll go here s underscore customer underscore dynamic lookup catch so this is the table right yes i'll go to this table i will update this record any one record i can update okay so this is the record i'm going to update it so it is a cd type 2 right it will take the previous record the history so now i will show you the lookup preview data so now if i'm going to run the preview data the, the record one which i updated right so for that we will get new lookup pro port will be 2 other new lookup pro port will be 0 2 0 0 so why because for this one only we have mobile number here and mobile number okay lookup mobile number we haven't taken why because we are taking the md5 checksum value since this mobile number i have changed it source md5 checksum value will get changed so we are comparing with target so based on that we are creating this particular column okay so now if i'm going to run this mapping task it should insert one record it should update one record so you take some duplicate value on the source table and try the same way you check whether it is removing the duplicate in the target table okay or you can check it in the online how to remove duplicate record by using dynamic lookup catch you will get some work around you can do it similar way how i did it all right similar way three records zero record for insert one record for insert update so whether it has taken the the history yes see here this is the one so effective date is today's date end date is 999 and then we have this record with the previous mobile number effective date is today's date end date also today's date this checksum value has been changed now okay i hope you are clear so this is what you have to practice the dynamic lookup caching so sometimes in the interview they will ask what is dynamic lookup caching you can tell them whatever we have seen right you can explain them but remember static and dynamic lookup catch once the lookup the once the task has been completed the caching will get vanished okay so now we will go for persistent catch can i store this catch in the memory can i store this same way it works in power center also yes power center also it will work in the same way only okay so power center also same way you can do the uh, dynamic lookup catch if you have power center just to try the same options options uh, it will work so that is that is the reason if you if you are having power center mapping while you are migrating power center to acs whatever we did 
the transformation logic. So that same thing you can do it in IECS also. We have to do. So that is what sometimes we will migrate the existing mapping into new mapping. Sometimes we may go uh, go into new development project. If you are getting into new development project, you will not migrate any old uh, one. So there will be separate team will be there. They will do all the migration, but you are concentrating on the new development. So whatever the way you want to explain, explain in the project levels. Okay. But here I will go to the one more lookup caching is called persistent cache. Right. So what is persistent cache? So persistent cache means this cache will be there in the server. Okay. The server it will get stored in the cloud server. But while session is running, after running, it will get downloaded in the our local secured agent also. If you go to C drive, program files, Informatica cloud secured agent, apps, data integration server, and here you will have data. So here you will have one option lookup caching. Yeah, caching here, right? See, as of now, I have some caching is created. I will remove this cache. Okay. So there is no caching. See, whenever we are running a preview, right? So that time also it will create. So whenever you are running preview, data preview, it will create some data preview sheet in our local only. We are running the preview. Like, yeah, I have executed the preview here. So this should be created in the this particular task only. You can see here if I open open with the Excel, Excel only, right? Okay, Excel or comma separated value file. So whatever we have seen, so that value will be there here only. It will create while preview data, it will show you here. Okay. Maybe this is different. This is different. Effective date, end date. And this might be a different one. This is lookup, lookup one. So it will, from here only it's showing, but it will download this file here. So it will create, Informatica will create a caching file here. If it is a static and dynamic, it will not be stored permanently. Fraction of second it will create and then it will get vanished. But here it will be created in the persistent cache. Okay, so where we will use persistent cache? For an example, you are looking up some tables that is static table, some reference code you have. Okay, no need to look up every time. Just you can persist in the memory. Very long time it will get changed. If it is getting changed, then you can update the caching. Otherwise, no need to update it every time so that it will not impact the performance. So persistent cache means after the session completed also, the caching will get stored in the database. The, sorry, in the the server. So when will you use this persistent catch? So I will go for some logic in in any task or task flow. If I want to use the same same lookup table, okay, same lookup table multiple times. Same lookup table multiple times. See here, I have one session here. I have one session here. I have one session here. I have one session here or task, you can say in this way, I have multiple tasks here. So parallel and sequential way, I have multiple tasks. So once this is complete, this will start session one. This is completed. These two will run in parallel. Okay. Parallel task, S2, S3. Once S2 completed, this will get triggered S, S4 and this will be S5. Session 5 or task 5, you can name it a different name. Yes, fine. Once these two completed, this will get triggered automatically. Yes, 6. Okay, task 6 or anything. We assume that you are going to use, you are using same lookup table, same lookup table in multiple sessions. Here also, here also, here also. One lookup table to create in the memory, it is taking 5 minutes. Okay, so five minutes it is running to create lookup caching alone. Lookup caching to create it is taking five minutes. If you are using static or dynamic, it will create 
once this task has been completed it will get vanished again it will create again it will create so you are create you are spending 20 minutes for all the four tables you are spending 20 minutes to create the same lookup table we have seen already right so once you have lookup table you are running on the same task it will create again and again so what you can do very first time you can create here after that you can use the same lookup in this place also this place also this place also so how can i use it so while creating the first lookup we can make it like it's a persistent catch it will be there in the server so then in the persistent catch you will give some name abc or some some name you can give the same name you can give it here for an example i'm giving name like abc same abc you can give it here then this task again it will not create any catching it will take the same catch but say for an example today you have executed the session one this task to task flow has completed tomorrow while running uh, this source table that lookup table has been changed in that case you have to update this lookup right otherwise if it is there in the persistent then you cannot uh, update the value so in that case you can update persistent you have to enable the recatch options so one option one option will be available in the lookup if you are creating lookup as persistent it will ask do you want to recatch yes we want to recatch the first session only okay so don't enable recatch for other sessions it will use the same lookup so that 20 minutes will be reduced with five minutes right so 15 minutes you can save so why because you are not going to create these three lookup again if it is same lookup table if it is different lookup table yes we have to obviously we have to create but same lookup table you are going to use in the same task flow so then you can go for persistent catch i hope you are clear so what is persistent catch we will take one scenario uh, if you look at this this scenario i have i think i already created so here i created two sorry two mapping one is m underscore persistent cache two another one is m underscore persistent cache one so what is that uh, this one right it has just i have taken the source table as employees table lookup is the department's table department's table only so this one t underscore employees underscore department so just a look looking up department's table similar way i took two mappings persistent catch one and persistent cache two okay catch one cache two and task flow persistent one task flow i have taken one task flow if you see the task flow this task flow i will open the task flow here so this is a task flow persistent catch catch one and catch two right okay first i will open the persistent catch one so just to create this mapping source employees table target is t underscore employees underscore department i need department name here okay i need department name department name and location id you know right we did uh, this logic for connected lookup one right then i'll go for the lookup in the lookup everything is same but in the advanced i will make the catching is catching enabled but here i'm using persistent catch okay for first uh, mapping i will use recatch options first mapping i will use recatching option i have given name for the lookup is persistent department clear or i can give any name even abc also for an example i will give underscore abc okay underscore some some value the same name i have to give in the persistent cache 2 i'll go here open the cache 2 same mapping only i'll go to the advanced one same name i have to give here persistent department abc this one this is the persistent catch but i am not enabling a recatch option okay clear 
I am not enabling recatch option. Save this. I will go to the task flow. So take one task flow. First one, I am just calling the first mapping task. You have to create one more mapping task. That's it. And second one, second mapping task. I am going to run this. Okay, so I am going to run. Now you can see it is running. Once this is completed, it will get triggered. But it will create the catching. See here. Persistent department underscore ABC. One is data catch. Another one is index catch. Another one is log file it will create. So informatica only it will do it. Index cache data catch. So index caching will be created on the join column. Okay. So now if you see it should have completed. Yes, both are completed, right? So now I will go to task. I will download the logs. Okay. This is one catch one. This is catch two. First uh, task I will download. Download the session log. First one. So just check here. So connect to the repository, all this it is doing, and then it will create a lookup caching. So lookup uses the database connection. Start, there is no pre-session command. It will go down, it will create lookup caching. Where is that? Yeah, so you can see here, lookup transformation lookup default sql to create lookup catching is so this is the one it is making right so if you want to remove the order by just uh, we have already seen increasing the caching all this so this is the lookup catching options if you go a little bit down it will show you lookup has lookup has been created okay see here lookup Catch creation completed, right? Lookup table row count is 27. Lookup catching is 27. It is creating the lookup catch. Created a new catch file. Persistent in the name of this one. Data catch index catch. Yes. Lookup index caching size. Data caching size. So finished the transformation for source qualifier. No more lookup catch to build by additional concurrent pipeline. In the current sorry in the current concurrent source set okay that that's what it is making the statement here okay so it will not it is saying that no more lookup cache to build i will take the second one so second one if you see i'll change this one if you see the second caching this is first caching this second one it will use the previous lookup caching See here, using existing catch files persistent for this one. Okay. If it is, you may ask question, if I'm removing some column here, it has some five columns on the same table, one more uh, same table, departments table, but it has three columns only. Can I go for persistent? No. It should be same columns, same tables. Okay. Same number of columns. This is the way persistent catch will work. Persistent catch means it will be persisted in the memory. You can use that. If any reference table, you are thinking that this table will not change over the period of time, you can create that particular option as stat, uh, persistent. You can ask me one more question. Can I create a lookup catches both dynamic as well as persistent? Yes, you can create dynamic as well as persistent. I hope you are clear. Just to one time you try to do it. So then you will get clear idea. So what is this persistent catch will do all this? Okay. I hope you are clear. Uh, what is the most commonly used uh, lookup catching? 
most commonly used lookup caching is static cache only static cache okay so dynamic cache persistent cache based on the requirement we will use it very rarely 90 percentage you will go for static cache only but very rare scenario will go for dynamic lookup cache and persistent lookup cache if you are getting the same lookup table multiple times on the same task flow then you can go for this way persistent cache otherwise you can go for static itself in case in future data in lookup table changes how we will update the persistent catch that's what we have given the recaching option right very first time so recatch options we have given then it will create recaching it will whatever the data has been refreshed it will automatically refreshed but in case of one single a task single task you have to do manually that means manually you have to remove that you have to put the recatch option enabled just to deploy it then it will do the recaching okay recatch from source yes we have to enable that recatch options so then it will create after that again you can see it's that's what if it is not going to change over the period of time then you can give as persistent otherwise you have to give persistent with recaching only 